Hi, in part one, I showed you how to use the formula for binomial probability to calculate the probability of getting X number of successes out of N number of trials if you've got a P probability of success on each trial. This formula is not too bad, but it's a little inconvenient to use, so there are other ways you can come up with this probability besides just using this formula. For example, you can use a graphing calculator. You would ask it for binome PDF, and you would give it the numbers for N and P and X in that order, and it would give you the answer, the probability. Let me show you what that looks like. Exactly what it looks like is going to depend on what model of calculator you have. But on something like this, this is a TI-83, you would push second and then the button that has the word DISTR for distribution above it. And then you would arrow down and find binome PDF, not binome CDF, but the one with the P in it. On this calculator, it's choice zero, but on other models, it's choice A. And when I select that, now it's waiting for me to put in these three numbers. So I would put in 13, comma, 0 0.8, comma, 11, close parentheses, enter, and it gives me the answer, 0 0.268, 0, 0.005993, so about 0.268. Here's another calculator version. On this one, this is a TI-84, and on this one, if I go to the Distributions menu, and go down to find Binome PDF, like I said, on this one, it's Choice A, and a little screen pops up where I can put in the numbers for how many trials, that's the N, and for the P, so that was 0 0.8, and for the X value, that's 11. And then I go down here to paste, hit enter, and it pastes in pretty much what I typed in here, and then I hit enter again, and it gives me the answer. I've also told you about the Desmos graphing calculator app that you can get for your phone or you can go to online in a web browser. And it has this kind of a function built into it. So to find the binomial probability on Desmos, here's how that would look. I would hit functions. This would be under DIST for distributions. And there it is, binomial disk. So I'm going to select that. And it wants me to put in just two numbers, the number of trials and the success probability. So in the example we've been doing, the number of trials was 13. Then I push the comma button. And the probability of success on each trial was 0 0.8. And what it does is it shows me a little graph of the individual probabilities. But to, to finish this off, I'm going to check the little box here next to find cumulative probability. And then the number we were using for x was 11. I'm going to type that same number into both of these blanks, min 11 and max 11. And the number that shows up in the little box here is the, the 0 0.268. That is the answer that we wanted. And you could do this with Microsoft Excel. You could go to any empty cell in the spreadsheet and type in equals B-I-N-O-M dot D-I-S-T, which of course stands for binomial distribution, and then in parentheses, put the number of trials, comma, the number of successes, comma, 
the probability, so that's your n and then your x and then your p, and then put the word false. So if I type in equals b i n o m dot d i s t parenthesis 13 comma 11 comma 0 0.8 comma false and hit enter hmm what happened here oh i'm sorry i told you wrong when you use Excel, the first number you put in is the number of successes. That was our X. And then you put in the number of trials. That was our N. So it would be 11, 13, 0 0.8, and then the word false. And now it works and it shows up as 0 So what's showing on the slide here is wrong. It should be 11, 13, 0 0.8, false for Excel. So I told you there was a table you could use. It is in the back of your book, starting on page 774. And then for several pages after that, and they're pages with blue edges, it's Appendix A, Tables. And the one we want to use right now is Table B for the binomial distribution. So if you turn to that page, you see something that looks like this, pretty much. And here's the way this works. The table is divided up into sections. The first section is what you would use if your n is 2. And then this is what you'd be looking at if your n is 3. This is what you'd be looking at if n is 4. This is what you'd be looking at if n is 8. If n is 9, you have to go to the next page and look at the next section of the table and so on. So there's sections of the table for all the n's up to 20. So the one we were looking at was for where n was 13. Now across the top, we have some possible p's. p could be 0.05 or 0.1 or 0.2 or any of these numbers here. So depending on what number we're using for p, that tells us which column to look at. And then these numbers here under the x, that's where we find the number we're looking at for x. So in the example we've been doing, n is 13. So we turn to the part of the table where n is 13. p is 0.8. So we look at this column with the 0.8 at the top. And x is 11. So we look at this row where x is 11. And we go across. We find the number that's in that row in that column, and that number is 0.268. So that is the answer. That is the probability of getting 11 successes out of 13 trials if P is 0.8. What's the probability of getting at least 11 successes out of 13 trials of p is 0.8. Now, this is a different question because we've got the words at least in there. We don't want to know just the probability of getting exactly 11 successes. We want to know what's the probability of getting at least that many. We want to know what's the probability that the number of times whatever it is happens out of 13 times that it could happen would be at least 11, which means it could be 11 or it could be more than that. Could be 12, could be 13. So to answer that question, well, if we're using the table, we're still looking at the same part of the table, but we're looking at all of the x's that are at least 11. That's the 11 and the 12 and the 13. Take all those probabilities and add them together, because getting at least 11 means 
that the number of successes is either 11 or it's 12 or it's 13. So we would add those three probabilities together, 0.268 plus 0.179 plus 0 0.055, and that adds up to 0.502. So that's the answer to that question. Now on the Desmos calculator app, here's how we could do that. We've got our binomial distribution with the number of trials being 13 and the success probability being 0.8. But this time we wanted the probability that X was at least 11. So that means anywhere from 11 on up, anywhere from 11 to all 13. So I would put 11 in the min blank and 13 in the max blank. And it shows up as 0 0.5016521.8 and so on. So that gives us the probability of the number of successes being anywhere from 11 on up to 13, which means at least 11. So that can come in handy if you are asking for the probability of not just one specific X, but a whole range of X's. What's the probability that X, the number of successes, is anywhere from something to something else? Next question, what's the probability of three successes out of 13 trials if P is 0 0.8? Let's go back to the table. N is 13, P is 0.8, X is 3, and we look over on the table and there's this blank spot there. What does that mean? Why is that part of the table blank? Well, that means that the probability is essentially zero. It's not exactly zero, but it's so small that if you rounded it to three places after the decimal point, the way all these numbers in the table are, then it would round to 0 0.000. So that probability is so small that it is zero if you just round to the nearest thousandth, to three places after the decimal point. Let's see what the graphing calculator would give us. If I ask the calculator for binome PDF of 13 comma 0 0.8, or I can just put it in as 0 0.8 comma 3, it shows up as 1.499 something E negative 5. So careful, when, when there's that E in the number that the calculator gives you, it's in scientific notation. So the probability is not just 1.499. That doesn't make sense as a probability because that's greater than 1. Instead, it's 1.499 times 10 to the negative 5 power. So if you wrote that out normally, it would be 0 0.00001499 and so on you'd slide the decimal point over five spaces to the left. So the probability that if you did something 13 times and each time had an 80% chance, a 0.8 probability of something happening, that that thing would end up happening three, only three out of those 13 times, that probability is 0 0.00001499. Practically zero. It's so small that if we rounded it to three places after the decimal point, it would be zero. So now that you've seen all the different ways that you could uh, calculate binomial probabilities, and there are others, there are websites you can go to and put in the numbers for n and p and x, and it'll give you the answer. But you don't need to know all the ways, you just need to know one or two that work for you, that you know how to use. So in the rest of the examples, I'm not going to be doing them all the different ways. I'm just be, going to be doing them one or two. Like we're just going to be looking at the table or just using the graphing calculator function. So see you in the next part of the video. We'll work through some more examples.